I am a ghostwriter, blogger, networker, business owner, and skier. Oh, and by the way, I just happen. You're there. It's like, blind skier. How does that happen? Well, it's interesting that, the, so the skiing is kind of a fun story to get people's attention, but yeah. it's, it accomplishes something that's more than just having fun. It was a way for me to flip the script on my blind, because at that moment, it was my blindness that was on stage and not me. I think a lot of sales and marketing people forget sometimes in the allure of persuasion and convincing others it's it's too easy sometimes to forget that they have to trust us. They have to really believe that we're the right ones for them. Mm. What I realized over time as the phone wasn't ringing and I was just kind of waiting and I was like, and I, I started to feel really, really low, really depressed and empty and more and more as the time went on because my life had no meaning and, and no purpose. I had two choices. I could either Devo. stay at home, go nowhere, do nothing, or I could get out there, go somewhere, do something, meet the people that I need. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome again to a new episode of Monday Talks. Today you have Super special guest. Her name is Krista Johnny. She's all the way from New York, USA. Hi, Krista. How are you? Good. Great. Amazing to have you. And it's, uh, uh, it's much appreciate the time difference between uh, here and um, USA. And uh, thank you for taking time to be my guest. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, let us so it's bit, even uh, for you, right, at the moment? Yeah, it is almost evening, yeah. <laughs> almost sunset, actually. And it's the beginning of the day here, so it works oh, yeah. out. Strange world. <laughs> um, okay, uh, as as usual, I, I, I gained a new habit to give the mic to my guests to present themselves. So I appreciate it if you can introduce who is Crystal. Absolutely. I am a ghostwriter, blogger, networker, business owner, and skier. Oh, and by the way, I just happen to be blind. Amazing. <laughs> Can I go stop you there? It's like, blind skier. How does that happen? Well, I originally didn't think it was possible to ski blind because I never even thought to Google it. If I would have Googled skiing for the blind, I would have gotten some hits, but I never even thought because I had a closed mind. And I'm sure many of you can relate to this, where sometimes you just hear about something and you're like, oh, I'll never do that. That's not me. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not going to be me. That's what happened for me with skiing, where I heard about people skiing. I thought, oh, that sounds like so much fun, but I never really thought I would do it until one day in 2012 or 2013 when my martial arts sensei introduced me to the people involved and he said we're going to go up there and go skiing want to join us and i was like really <laughs> oh my god and how was it the first experience with skiing well, it was the, first of all there was a, there was a lot that led up to that first experience. I had to pick up the phone and get past that are they crazy to actually see <laughs> that they had a method to their madness. They had wonderful, warm, welcoming volunteers that were ski instructors and ski guides who'd had special training and experience to be able to help blind and visually impaired people to ski. It wasn't just, oh, We'll, we'll, we'll manage. We'll hang in there. No, it was people who had already learned from people who came before them, who innovated, who thought outside the box. And I'll never forget that first day on the ski slopes with the peppery yeah. snow on my face and yeah. the, the, the swoosh of, of the skiers going by. And 
all the merry sounds of people being cheerful all around, the sound of the snow machine and the crunch of the skis and the fall line under my feet, all those different sensations. And here I was, oh my gosh, really scared. I don't know what's going to happen. But you know what happened was that it was a slow progression. I, I got used to walking in those clumsy, awful ski boots first. And then I put the yeah. skis on and got used to walking in the skis and, well, and balancing rather. I got used to balancing with the skis. And now and you eventually... can ski alone? Well, so I'm getting to that. So Ooh. I, so I'll never forget that first time when they gave me that little push down that little hill. And it was an amazing feeling because I was skiing, I was gliding, I felt like I was flying, and then I was crawling, and then I got back up again, <laughs> back up again, and that's what skiing is for me. I'm just, I'm an amateur skier, I'm not a good skier, but the, the wonderful thing is that up on the ski slopes, we work as a team, so there's a ski instructor and there are one or two ski guides that are literally forging the path ahead making sure that th that it, we have a safe path for all of us to ski. And there are different ways to ski. Um, when I'm skiing alone, they're calling out directions. So they're saying left and right, and they're telling me kind of, you know, whether it's a hard turn or a quick turn or whatever it may be. And of course, and I learned very hands that learn how to do the different motions in skiing how to kind of wedge your your skis together and how to how to ski in parallel and how to kind of edge the skis to make a turn and all of those techniques I learned by You've feel. done something very bold. Even even uh those who can see <laughs> they don't do it. Well the cool thing is ski. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So uh moving forward what inspired you to become a ghostwriter, blogger, or speakers, and then become a speaker, right? Well, it's interesting that, the, so the skiing is kind of a fun story to get people's attention, but yeah. it, it accomplishes something that's more than just having fun. It was a way for me to flip the script on my blindness, to, to tell my story the way I wanted it to. They, the way I wanted to be told. Now, I've always had a story in my head ever since I was a little kid. And I've been telling other clients stories for years. But what I wasn't doing was sharing my own story. And now that I've stopped shying away and started to embrace my story, it actually makes my experiences as a ghostwriter and blogger more powerful because I can inspire clients to share more of their own stories. So in the same way that I've always had a story in my head, you know, I've always wanted to write and I've always loved words and language. I want to inspire and empower my clients to get the most out of their writing experiences, if that makes sense. So when, when I, and the skiing basically flips the script on my story that originally I wasn't sharing my story because I thought that it would make people see my blindness first and me second, even if they'd never met me. And I didn't want that because there are so many negative expectations that we have in society. But I learned an important lesson when I was... I, I remember the story like it was yesterday. I was all smiles. I was on stage ready to get an award. Oh, the nonprofit that I was been working with, they're going to talk about my writing ability. They're going to talk about what I've done for the organization. Well, what happened wasn't exactly, it didn't exactly go as I'd planned. The lady said, Krista Janik is blind. She takes, she always shows up. And, and she, even though she has to take the bus everywhere, it's amazing. And honestly, I just wanted to sink into the floor. Because at that moment, it was my blindness that was on stage and not me. 
Pardon? I was saying, well, this is something, uh, um, let's say, not what you're looking for. It was exactly your blindness, not you on the stage. That's how I had felt, and she may have said other things, and I'm sure she had positive intentions. She may have just wanted the story to be about showing up and doing what's needed, because that was also the motto of the organization. But in that moment, that's not how it made me feel. Whereas now I look back on that moment with gratitude because I realized that I needed to tell my own story in a powerful way. People are going to tell our stories whether we want them to or not. So we might as well direct and influence the narrative. So ghostwriting and blogging has so much more power when we think about it as the stories that define us, the stories that help us to build trust with our audiences and that help our audiences feel comfortable with us, comfortable enough to take action. I think a lot of sales and marketing people forget sometimes in the allure of persuasion and convincing others. It's, it's too easy sometimes to forget that they have to trust us. They have to really believe that we're the right ones for them. Wow. Wow. Okay, let's say you are on stage for the first time in the world. What would be the starting story? I would share just as I shared with you. I would share my skiing story. I would share the story about that award that I had won. And then I would talk about how it's so important to share our stories and, and help people to do that, to learn to do that. Well, then, it's, it's very, very interesting and, and uh, keep me silent to hear it all, you know, when you start talking about it. Uh, uh, okay, moving again forward. So, can we talk about uh, a time when you faced a difficult challenge? either on personal life or career life, when you when you stopped to be shy, when you decided to say, hey, uh, I need to move on, how you overcame that? Well, it was, when I first started my business, I was an unintentional entrepreneur. I never intended to be a business owner. <laughs> My, I loved writing, I, and I still do. I loved, I, really what I love most is learning, asking the right questions, and being able to then write about and teach others what I've learned through my writing. That's what I love the most, and being able to help people share their stories. So, going backward, rewinding all the way to the beginning there, where I didn't know I was going to be a business owner. My challenge was that I wasn't checking off all the boxes and I wasn't really sharing my story about my blindness because I wanted people to see my resume for what it was and not, you know, not prejudge because so many people don't understand that blind people and other people with disabilities are very capable. I wasn't checking off all the boxes, though. Sometimes I would get phone interviews or other types of, and they would say, oh, do you know graphic design? Well, I don't think you want me designing your website. I could draw you a circle. With <laughs> yeah. Or do you know HTML? I know a little bit of coding, but not enough to work with it. So I was finding that they wanted me to wear all these hats that, I either wasn't able to 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 wear or that just didn't make sense for me to to focus on learning. And I I felt like I was in a position of weakness and the interview coaches would be like smile smile. Oh, no. Like what do I have to <laughs> smile about? No. What I realized over time as the phone wasn't ringing and I was just kind of waiting and I was like and I, I started to feel really, really low, really depressed and empty and more and more as the time went on because my life had no meaning and, and no purpose. And I made a decision 
and I had to make the decision over and over and over again. But when you're at the bottom there, it's kind of a no-brainer. I had two choices. I could either Divorce. stay at home, go nowhere, do nothing, or I could get out there, go somewhere, do something, meet the people that I needed to meet on a more equal footing than the interview room. And that's what I did. I built my own strengths. I got some projects online, built up my portfolio beyond what I had. I was able to to talk about what lit me up inside and also focus on the other people in the room and what what it was ask them questions do what I was was best at which was asking questions and getting to know people in that way so in, in that way I was able to turn the weakness of well I'm not fitting into these employment boxes into a strength where people started hiring me to write for them Beautiful. And you also uh, are a board member of Suffolk Independent Living Organization. Uh huh. Uh, what initiatives are you currently involved in? Silo is an organization run by and for people with disabilities. Many states, if people are listening from states in the U.S., they have it, the independent living movement, and I believe there are independent living centers in almost, almost every state. And what makes us unique is that we actually are run by and for people with disabilities, that we provide the tools for independence and success. We do, so Silo and other independent living centers do information and referral. When people with disabilities call up with a challenge, they can get answers, information, resources. They can get peer counseling, which basically means they can talk to other people with disabilities mm -hmm. who've possibly been in similar situations and get some support and encouragement and sometimes some tough love. And they can, there are also different, different centers have different programs like helping people to get out of nursing homes or other institutions or possibly to avoid going there in the first place right. by providing community support instead of having to lock people away. Beautiful. Other going, programs going, like that. yeah. Let's go back to Kristen. Um, I know it's even tougher for you as a blind to go into such challenges and, and and start your own business as an entrepreneur. You know, because uh, I've been through that. But I'm sure there was deep, weak points you have crossed to reach there. Can you share um, your toughest one when you had your tears on? Well, as I mentioned, I wasn't checking off all the boxes. It wasn't really a particular moment. It was just overall the dark cloud that I What's had that felt. Moment that, that I felt led you to I felt like I felt worthless. I felt like I didn't matter. I felt like I I felt invisible. I felt powerless. And what helped me through it was that I realized that I was always going to feel powerless unless I changed something unless I got stronger, unless I did something to move out of it because nobody was going to pull me out. Nobody was going to save me. Yeah. And yeah, the, the, the other side, the positive side, when did you uh, live the moment where you could uh, just fly, feel yourself flying between the clouds of the accomplishment you have done. I don't know that there was a particular moment that I can think of. Because for me, a lot of this has been growing, developing. It's kind of looking back. Like if I look, I can take a moment now and look back today and look back and see how far that I've come. 
from that those those days of just kind of sitting alone with no purpose to not being able to write for clients when i you know when when i got when i realized that i could get clients through my own strengths when i worked with mentors and coaches and um i i've done a lot of different things i i learned i took some sales training public speaking training i'm now a toastmaster so that I don't know that it was a particular moment where I can say, oh, wow, I'm so accomplished. I just think mm -hmm. that every time I do something positive, I build on my success. What's next for Kristen? I want to do more ghostwriting. I want to get clients who are true thought leaders, visionaries, innovative people, people who are out there speaking, and maybe pe people who are kind of up and coming speakers who want to write their their first book and who realize that that'll help them that'll help them further their journey build credibility and trust people who i'm sure you've met these folks that they're really passionate about what they have to say but they're i mean or should i say and they're really passionate about what they have to say and they're they're not necessarily they may they're they may be their messages may be falling on deaf ears to some degree because they haven't quite found the way to share their message in a way that that appeals to their audience i talk a lot about what matters to your audience even more than what matters to you is there uh, someone you dream to meet public figure Speaker. There are a lot of people who I think would be interesting to me. One was... would have been Helen Keller if she was alive. Mm. She's a fascinating person because, I mean, people know the miracle worker, but she's a lot more than that. She had ideas that were very much out of her time, and yet she mm. persevered and shared unpopular points of view. So I think it would be really interesting to talk to someone with unpopular points of view and, and get a sense of, because she was a very optimistic person, even through all of her challenges, even through how she, there were things that she deeply wanted that she wasn't able to achieve. But yeah, she stayed, uh, you know, she, her writings show that, that, she's, that she was optimistic. And I think it would be neat to meet the real person behind that. that that's one person. Another one is Neil deGrasse Tyson, the physicist mm -hmm. who writes popular science books that draw people in who are not scientists into the wonder that he feels when talking about the universe. So I, I would love to find out there how he got to do that. And does he, I'm curious too, does he use, does he use uh, folks like journalists or ghostwriters or co-authors to... Has he used those folks to help him to share his, or, or was it kind of an innate thing where he just knew how to speak to the audience? Well, I wish you could have the chance to, to meet those guys. Let's hope they can hear us today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you're in a position to introduce yourself with two words, what would that be? Thoughtful writer. Again? Thoughtful writer. Wow. And you've given a very strong thought about these two words. They are so meaningful. Okay. Two things that are still in your bucket list. I'm not really sure, actually. I've done a lot of different things. I'm not sure what's next, to be honest. No. Dreams? Things to do? Well, I mentioned already about my ghostwriting, what I'd like to do. I'd like to write for more people like Neil deGrasse Tyson. That's a big one. Are you into adrenaline? Can you jump off the... Off the no. The... I'm not into adrenaline for its own sake. I like to feel new sensations. I'm into novelty. 
So that's oh. not really the same thing as adrenaline, although there is a, a wonderful feeling of having faced a fear. It's it's yeah. like, so it's not about the adrenaline. It's about the the feeling of having beaten myself. Huh. Of having overcome my own limitations. But it's, I mean, the skiing I did because I wanted to experience a new feeling. There's nothing like skiing. There's, there's no other sensation that compares to it. Except perhaps uh, snow tubing or... But even that, it's a different sensation. They're all different sensations. So I want to explore what other sensations are out there that I haven't felt. Let's talk about fears. Can you name two? What's that? Fears. What's your most top two fears? Fears? Yeah. Um, doing the wrong thing, whatever that may be. Uh, getting hurt, like getting physically hurt. Now, yeah. Can you name one habit to gain and one habit to get rid of when you plan for 2023? I want to expand on my mini habit of meditating, doing mindfulness practice to make it so that it's a half an hour every day. Wow. That's consistency. That's a big goal. Well, I'm already doing it. So I already have the mini habit where I'm doing it anywhere from five minutes a day to 15, 20, and sometimes longer sessions. But I'd love to have it be around a half an hour. That way I get, you know, 15 minutes at one point in the day and 15 minutes at, in the other point in the day, that kind of thing. So it, it, it could be approximately. I'm not saying I have to, you know, set the, the buzzer every single time and, oh, well, if it's 25 minutes, it's not good enough. But I, you know, just a general sense um, because I've, I've noticed that mindfulness has helped me to slow down in moments where moments when it's easy to react instead of to consider what I actually want to say, do, be who I want to be. And so practicing mindfulness and other types of meditation has helped me to come more into my own self-awareness. Mm -hmm. And that's why that habit is important. It's not, We're almost it's not there, so I would love to ask you for one last letter or one last message, sorry, to, to address the audience. What would you like to say? Oh, the habit to get rid of, by the way, is procrastination. But the message... I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, all right. Yes, because I realized I, do I dodged that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, okay. um, the message, if you think something's impossible, find someone who's already done it. Because that's what I did. Or rather, that's they found me. Wow. Oh, that's so deep. <laughs> Thank you so much for really um, saving my time. Uh, I mean, uh, giving me your time uh, to be with me here overseas and uh, sharing a wonderful story of yours. I'm sure it was, yeah, uh, extreme with the way the with feelings about standing up again and feeling yourself worthy and producing and um, just like anybody else, crossed that challenge, overcame that challenge into becoming, um, adding value to the world, rather just like receiving help or looking for uh, people just like talking about your blindness instead of your character, just like you said. But now you have your own print of the world and you're making the change you're adding value thank you for being such a person and thank you for being my guest thank you daniel thanks a lot and uh, i have to wrap it up now because um, it's almost time so okay. thank you very much uh for the audience and thank you very much krista and have a lovely day mm -hmm.